tour of this nice, interesting chapter. Um, like uh, like we like I mentioned, guys. Let me get my pointer here. Um, there are close to 50, 60 wiring methods, depending depending how you look at it in any secret book. Um, the so-called special system that we're going to be looking at, guys, are a few extra wiring methods that you can use, uh, Derek, in order to be a productive electrical contractor or electrical engineer. So I'm going to, like, if you guys, I don't know if you remember, but I told you between EMT and MC cable, EMT with wires in it and the MC cable, it's already have the wire already in it, you probably covered 90% of the wiring methods that you need. Uh, if you're underground, you use PVC, right? PVC conduit, schedule 80 or 40 because of corrosion. And if you are in a hazardous location or severe physical protection, you use rigid. So that's the really rigid PVC underground because of corrosion, rigid metal conduit because of physical protection, uh, severe physical protection for equipment. If a car is to run into a, a conduit, you need uh, a rigid um, and so these two are typically for special application between EMT conduit right here. You can see it everywhere else. You're looking at EMT conduit and the MC cable. Cool. Now what happened? So these are the most common ones they're going to be using. There are others guys that use commonly, for example, in uh, schools like our schools. You look at this. This could be considered a raceway, non-metallic raceways with all these outlets um, attached to it. So what we're going to be talking about today, guys, is surface metallic raceways and what do you use them and what's not also multi-outlet assemblies multi-outlet assembly atom is right in front of you here these multi-outlet assembly um where would you use them um, and so forth metallic and non-metallic raceways typically they're surface mounted and we'll talk a little bit about them loading allowances how much do you load the multi-outlet assembly Anybody, I don't know if you guys remember, we said if it's simultaneously, if it used, we put them 180 volt amp for every foot, non simultaneously used for every five feet, we give 180 amps, 180 volt amps. Um, and then, so these are wire, different wire methods that they use in any secret book. So you're looking at one wire methods here and another wire methods here. This has uh, times two because there's metallic and non metallic too. Then the smarter than Chad, they can go underground, guys. You see them a lot in open offices. We're doing it in our, in our office, uh, uh, Adam. You can go underground in the concrete slab and you put conduits and boxes. That's another, another wearing method. So two ways of doing it. Either use PVC conduits and a proper boxes with it, or, or you can use underground raceways. They have a system, complete system, I don't know if anybody ever seen a complete wiring system that calls underground raceways. So they put them under under floor, under floor raceways, and they put them and they put the concrete right at the top of them and boxes and what's not and receptacles and so forth. So that's what we're going to be talking about. And then um, computers, I, we talk about computers that they create always harmonics, guys. So when you do brand circuits for these babies, you always, the question when you, ever you feed laptops and computers and servers, think one little thing heavy harmonics, and pull an extra neutral, pull an extra neutral. So that's what I would like to um, to go over, guys. So uh, surface, met <clears throat> surface um, metal raceways, surface metal raceways or surface raceways, guys, you can get them in metallic or non-metallic application. Generally um, installed as an extension to existing electrical raceways, um, where it's impractical to conceal the conduits. Where would you use that wiring methods, guys? You you go so Derek, you walk into a school, and they're remodeling a school, and they don't want to to make it look nicer. They don't want to put um, EMP conduits exposed. Um, you know, uh, surface surface mounted raceways will look nicer when they're exposed and carry tons of wires. So you can use surface mounted raceways, pull tons of wires on it, and go everywhere. Um, so that that would be for typically, uh, you know, existing buildings remodeling and what's not. There are the article that talks about them, guys. Here's an article. Of, I'll give you a quick walk of article 386, where they're used and where they're not used, um, and governs the installation of surface uh, non-metallic ones right in here too. So the difference. So what the difference between? I, I always tell the people when I teach wiring, guys. If if you want to, the only difference between metallic and non-metallic is if you have highly corrosive environment, um, uh, mat 
always think non-metallic. Because you put steel, guys, anything metallic in a highly corrosive environment, typically what happens to it? Corrosion. So if you have an area that you need to pull conductor, a surface, and you need, it's highly corrosive, what do you do? A good application for it is non-metallic. Both of them do the same thing, though. Okay, so these are surface mounted. You put the wires, they're meant exactly like you're looking at them right there. They're meant to build the build them surface mounted and then put your conductor in, put your, build them in and pull your conductor right through it. Pull your conductor right through them. Any comments, guys, any questions? I'll show you a couple of pictures in a second. Any comments, any questions? So um, as a matter of fact, this is what, you, what you're looking at. Um, right away from the get-go. Uh, here's how you're looking. This is what you're looking at here. Um, they come in these shapes. You can, they are, you put your conductors, you pull your conductors right through them. You put your conductors, you, you clamp them right around your conductors. So they get you tons and tons of wires going right through it. Um, like I said, tons and tons of wires going right through these, uh, these boundaries, surface mounted. Any comments, guys, any questions about that? Comments, questions? So that's your that's what you're looking for. Um, Adam, they come with tons of hardware. So these are complete wiring methods. Karen, you have to have they have connectors, they have boxes that comes with them, they have hardware to support them. So like EMT conduit, you can't use you can't use the fittings that comes with EMT conduit with the fittings that comes with surface mounted raceways. Um, so all these guys come with different raceways. Here's here's one you're looking at. Um, you can come from right here. Here's a switch that comes attached to your surface. Uh, uh, this is metallic or non-metallic race with. You can see the 90 degree um, that you can have that fillings. You can see the box, the stem. All these guys have to be, as well as the conduit themselves, they have to be uh, listed to work with the surface mounted race with metallic or non-metallic. Does that make sense? You guys have used a the mold. They call the mold sometimes in, in, in residential. And what's not but you can get them in bigger sizes an inch to inch and what's not and you can pull tons and tons of, of wires inside them you have they have fittings uh what the best application for them adam is remodeling if you, you want to remodel you don't want to uh put ugly empty conduits there and cables that will be a good application for them any comments any questions does that make sense yes no matthew so that's your your wire method again metallic or non-metallic um, here's another application, guys, where you can ex use it to extend. So you have a uh, surface raceway here, metallic or non-metallic, uh, open base box extension. You can extend it and go to multiple locations. Can you guys see that? You can go to an existing box here, extend that box with an extension and go to a multiple location. Put a raceway here and another raceway here and extend it. Now that would look ugly if this isn't dwelling, wouldn't it? Look ugly and dwelling, but take this. How about in a block, um, in a concrete block or a block wall that you need, you have a, a, a one receptacle <clears throat> was in a block and now you need a few of them. <clears throat> you want to extend it. Wouldn't that be a, an easier way right on the block, that concrete block or, or cinder or what's not, to put the extension and go with the raceways wherever you want to go? That would be a good solution for a problem, an existing problem. Any comments, guys, any questions? Derek, does it make sense? Yeah, I was just going to ask, like, if you're a flat technician, <clears throat> they're saying, like, it's on both. Like, one of the questions is that they're kind of uh, attached. If you put it through a partition, like, through the jack partition. Yes. Yeah. yeah I wasn't sure what this was Good point. F. Can it go right through the partition? Yes. As long as you don't have a device right through the partition. So what, the partition has to be here, 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 but it can't be here. So as it goes through the partition, make sure there's no device here. That's, that's the thing. So what they do is you can go from here to the other side, no problem, as long as you don't have a device. Because guys, look at this. But you can't have this one here in the partition. The partition can be here, can be here, but the can the cannot be like something like this. Does that make sense? All of them are the same. You can because how are you gonna get access or a junction box? Oh not a junction box. If you have a junction box, if you're using a junction box, you don't want the you don't want it right into where the junction box is too. You know, you don't want to block your devices and and, and junction boxes and what's not. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. So that's um 
that's your calculation. Here's they can uh, they can come, guys. Look at this configuration that you can looking. You're looking at different configuration. They can come. You're looking at this atom right there on the wall in our school. They can have devices that you can put right through them too. Um, multiple devices that you can do, put right through them. Um, so these are. So if you put if it comes pre-manufactured where you can put devices on them, guys, like this. This they call them now. They change them. They change the name from. It looks exactly the same from surface metallic or non-metallic raceways into so-called multi-outlet assembly. Multi-outlet assembly. Um, so they change them into multi. If you can build your receptacles right into them like these, it becomes a multi-outlet assembly. Does it make sense, Derek? If you can build now, it's surface, right? It is a surface mounted raceway, except now they can build it. They have a way we're building these receptacles and low voltage into them. Um, low voltage and high voltage. They can separate the low voltage from the high voltage. It becomes what we call. This is the one in front of you. That's multi outlet assembly right here in front of you. These are these in the wall. These are when they build them into it, it becomes multi outlet assembly. Multi outlet assembly. Okay, so that's uh, that's what I want to go for multi outlet assembly. For multi outlet assembly, when they build the devices, guys, they can have two sections here. I don't know if you guys can see the partition. They can have um, high voltage, high voltage section here, and they can have low voltage. So you can have your phones and data down here at the bottom. Can you see the divider? At the bottom, you can put your data and phone and what's not. At the top, you can put your devices. That's your, that becomes a multi-outlet assembly, which is some form of a raceway. Almost some form of a raceway, except it has devices inside it. The surface metallic raceway and non-metallic raceway here does not have devices. You know, you have to have a box to put a device. These guys, you can you can build in certain sections. You can build your devices inside it. Okay, so that's what I wanted to show you before we go. Let's um, let's go back, guys, into that one. All right. Um, so that's metallic raceways. <clears throat> How many conductors uh, uh, and what size of conductors you can put in a metallic ra raceway, guys? It's all um, ca calculated by the manufacturer. The manufacturer will tell you how many conductors and what's the largest conductor that you can install. Always driven by manufacturers for metallic wireways, um, raceway, what, not raceways, uh, metallic raceways and non-metallic raceways. How many conductors and what's the largest conductor you can install in that baby? You have to go to the NEC code. No NEC code book. You have to go to the manufacturer specification. So the largest conductor is for ATSI for this particular one, and the number of conductors, um, the number of conductors I can pull through it, I can fill up to say two inches, square inches. As you pull your conductors, you can you and you splice guys. The sizes slices and tabs shall not fill more than seventy-five percent race in in the raceway. I can splice in these raceways, guys. You splice them and tab them on what's not, but you don't want to make it a junction box full. You can't fill more than 75% splice and wires. And the raceways can come up with different sizes and what's not. They come in, in multiple sizes. One more time. Metallic and non-metallic wireways, they come, they, the, how many conductors you fill and what the largest conductor is driven by the manufacturer. You can't, you can't splice in them, but you do not, you can't fill more than 75% of the area. And they come in different sizes. And um, the rating, in terms of the rating, guys, for these babies, if you fill, if you fill 20% of them, the metallic ones, you don't have to rate until you hit 30 current carrying conductors. Uh, if you only fill 20% of them, if so, there is a catch would fill 20% of them. We talked about that one. Here's the extension that you can see. Um, Okay, so and I'll I'll walk you guys through the article in a second. Any comments, any questions about metallic and non-metallic wireways? Summarize. They come in different sizes. They are metallic or non-metallic. If it's typically metallic, you put it in. If you have highly corrosive environment, great application for it. But you can put it anywhere. Um, how many conductors you can fit on it based on the manufacturer specification? Uh, what's the largest conductor you can put into it? The same thing, but specified by the manufacturer. 
If you fill it 20%, the metallic ones, guys, you only fill 20% of it, then you can, you don't have to derate. You can pull up to 30 current carry conductors before you start derating. That's a big advantage. Okay, multi-outlet assembly. Multi-outlet assembly, guys, it looks like a, a metallic and non-metallic raceways, except they have built into it devices. You have devices built into it, like, like you're looking at the wall here. They have a whole article that talks about it, guys. Um, a whole article that talks about it and a uh, high degree of flexibility. So where would you do it in heavy duty use area? Um, right, exactly right in the front of you guys. See that? This is multi-out assembly. Why? Because we could have four students sitting right here. Each one of them is plugging their laptop. That's a heavy duty. Um, benches. If you have a bench, work at home. That's another multi-out assembly. You put it there, blah, 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 blah. You plug them in there. Uh, manufacturing areas. If you do manufacturing and troubleshooting and what's not, a great application for multi-out assembly. So pre-manufactured raceway with devices on them, either hardwired or plugged in. That's what they are. Um, in the walls right here, guys, they are hardwired. They put them right into them. These, the ones in the front of you, they are plugged in. Can you see the plug at the end of each one of them? They're plugged in. And underneath, if you look underneath, they're plugged in. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Any comments? Any questions about the multi-outlet assembly? Multi-outlet assembly. So it's some form of a raceway. It looks like a raceway, except with devices built into them. Where would you use them? In the places where heavy use of equipment. Now, in the project that we have, they're using them in the insurance office. If you guys, when we were looking yesterday, multi out assembly uh, that will uh, accommodate, and you can have inside them power, you can have data, and you can have telecommunication, you can have security and visual audio. So, and um, the only thing for these multi out assembly, as well as the raceways, guys, if you want to put high voltage and low voltage, one simple word, Derek, separation. You can have the same channel separated in the middle. You put one, the bottom low voltage, the top high voltage separated all across, and then you can have multi-outlet assembly that has low voltage and high voltage in, uh, built into the same thing. Does that make sense? The key word is you can't mix a low voltage. You can't put the phone line, guys, in the same enclosure with a, a lighting circuit or receptacle circuit, okay? Multi-outlet assembly also can have a GFCI, um, in these applications, guys, you can GFCI, isolated ground, they can build them in isolated ground, surge, or, surge submission or surge, um, surge submission devices, all these can be built like any other, like any other uh, receptacle. Here's the multi-out assembly, different looks of that multi-out assembly, you can have the hard wire it. So for multi-out assembly, the same thing, uh, Derek. Can it go through a partition? Yes. What's the, the what's the problem then? Can you put the partition right here? If the partition is right in here, no problem. You can partition it at these areas, as long as you don't have a device right through the partition. Does that make sense? Any comments, guys, about multi-out assembly? Any comments? Any questions, my friends? Comments, questions, multi-out assembly. Okay, for these guys, when we remember for every one foot, you give it 180 volt amp if it was simultaneously used. For every five feet, you non simultaneously used, you give it 180 volt. You guys remember when you did the math, the calculation with me? We said multi out assembly, you give them 180 volt amp and you derate them. Um, if they're simultaneously used or if they're non simultaneous. If you don't you if you don't know, always assume they're simultaneously used and give every one foot of them on an 80 volt amp. Like I said, the separation, very important to separate the high voltage from the low voltage section in the multi-out assembly, in your multi-out assembly. Separation is so important. Loading, we talked about the loading, guys. The loading is basically 180 volt amp. For multi-outlet assembly, if it's simultaneously used for every one foot, every five feet, 180 if it's not simultaneously used. They're, they're looking at the loads guys calculated on, in the project that they have here. Um, total continuous capacity, this amount, predicted load is this amount. Determine feeder conductor. You guys remember when you when you determine the feeder conductor, you go to 220 to 44 and you do the rating. <clears throat> 
you can apply the rating of 50% up to 10. This will give you 10K VA. Leave him alone. Higher than 10K VA, cut them by 50%. You guys have done that with me um, a couple of times. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Any comments? Any questions? So when we calculate them directly, take 180 volt amp, multiply by um, the number of feet if they are simultaneously used, and then add them to the receptacle in your building, and then apply the the first 10k, leave them alone. Higher than 10k, cut them by half. Exactly like receptacles. Exactly like your receptacles. Um, for multi-out assembly, guys, they said. When they space the receptacles, and again, it depends if it's if you're building it in the field. If you're building in a field like this, can you guys see that? 18, 18 inches between the receptacles, but they also you are listed. You can list them less than that. Look at the one in front of you here. This you are listed for less than that. But typically, receptacle must be spaced 118 inches apart. Uh, all receptacles on phase. So when you connect them, there's multiple ways of connecting guys. I, either you put all receptacles on a phase connected in continuous row. You can see there's different ways of connecting them, or you can alternate them. Inside your multi out assembly, right there, Derek, I, I brought, here's my multi outlet assembly right in here. I can either, I brought um, three circuits here, multi wired circuit, one, two, three, tied together, 20 amp each, and the voltage here is 208 slash 120 volt right and i can i bring phase a to feed the first um six phase b the second six phase c the third six that's one way of doing yeah the better way though is to stagger them can you see that so you bring phase a it becomes the way they, they did it here is phase a phase b phase c phase a phase b phase c phase a phase b phase c and you keep going or you can do it this way. Here's phase A, here's phase B, and here's a bit bunch here, six here, six here, and six here. Here's phase A, B, and phase C. You see what I mean? This will be cheaper. The first one will be cheaper. The second will be the most appropriate. So if you're doing it the second way, this will be phase A, phase B, phase C, phase A, phase B, phase C. You go all the way around. Why this is better? The two offices right here, now we have. A circuit comes from phase A and B and C. What's the likelihood they're going to trip these three circuits in your office? You might trip one of them, but so but if, if these three are coming from the same circuit and you trip, you lost three of them. So it's uh, anyway. So then you can do the same thing we do with the, with the receptacles, guys, in an office. When you feed them, either you feed them all from one phase or you stagger them. Any comments? Any questions about the connection? Questions? So that's your. Um, connection um this is talks in the, in the end of the chapter guys talks a little bit about uh, the communication system so it talks about we'll install an empty conduit systems electrical contractor will install a company so when you do communication system uh, adam they do it different way they do rough end so you bring the conduits from the ceiling down to a box and you stay there and then either you or the te telecommunication, the phone line and the data guys come and pull the wires and put the devices. One more time. For communication equipment like data and phones, when they do the way they do them in a the commercial, first you put the electrical contractor typically put the boxes and the conduit up, they stub it up in the ceiling. Then either the electrical contractor or the higher low voltage contract comes later and pull the CAT5 cables and the phone lines and what's not and pull them right through the conduit, put the box, device them. So does that make sense how you do that communication system? Be aware because that's when we do the, uh, the takeoff, it'll, it'll make a big deal. Okay, so volt amp power requirement, 2,500 volt amp for installation. This is just uh, allowing a big chunk of power for the telecommunication industry to power it. Uh, communication guys is, are covered um, and phones and what's not are covered in Article 800. Um, the key word, the key word, um, are materials and method used for installing waste wood are the same. The key word um, when it comes to phone lines and data is can you, and you guys know it, can you put the phone lines and the CAT5 in the same conduit or raceway with the power? No. Why? Two reasons. Safety. Number one, because if what, what happened if you short 
through the cable TV, uh, coaxial cable. Now somebody goes touch the TV and get electrocuted because that coaxial, the shield, uh, if it's not ground especially, you get shocked from the shield. So we separate them completely for two reasons. Number one, safety, and number two, because we don't want to impose interference on the telecommunication industry, in telecommunication cables. Okay, so when they do the stop up, so you come with an EMT, you can do it with an EMT conduit, guys, and a box right here, 10 foot, 10 foot, and you uh, square box, four by four, uh, square box, right, the one and uh, two and next to two and a half. Um, and then, um, so uh, this is three quarter of an inch, typically, or an inch, and you put a wire right through it. Then they can come and pull their conductors and put their devices, the low voltage contractor or the owner, um, later on. Either use EMP or ENT conduit. That's how they stub them up. Okay, so communication. Typically, you put a conduit in a box, and later on, you or the uh, low voltage contractor come and finish it. Exactly like we do with high voltage. Floor outlets. For floor, now, any question guys about surface small raceways? Very easy, surface mount arrays with metallic, non-metallic, multi-out assemblies. The last system we want to talk about, guys, is called floor outlets. Now, what happens if you need a, an outlet in the floor? In the floor, right? Right in the 15th floor or on the slab. So install under under um, under floor raceways. So there's two options, guys. You can have an under floor raceways and install floor boxes. So you can either use PVC conduit with special boxes with it, or you can have a complete underfloor raceway system. Complete underfloor raceway system. The underfloor raceway system, Adam, I don't know how many of you guys installed it, covered in Article 390. So it tells you that you can, it's a built, you'll see it in a second. It's a complete conduit. It can come actually in two sections, one for low voltage, one for the high voltage, and everything is completely in the concrete slab. You can put it in anywhere, and, and you can put boxes, junction boxes, as well as device boxes in the floor, in the floor. So the question would be, guys, who cares? Have you ever wondered who cares? You design, we're designers. We're designing power system for every type of building in America, right? Think about it. Every type of building, uh, from the IDS tower here in Minneapolis into your house um, and in between. So don't you think we have to have different methods of wiring to match different application? That's that application. You walk into the IDS tower and right in that big open place, you need an outlet in the floor, right? So that is an application where you can put an outlet in the floor, not in the, in, not in the wall. So all these methods, guys, came to solve problems, wiring problems for different applications. That's why they do it. So what is this system? It comes it's a complete system that comes with connectors and boxes and what's not. You'll see them in a second here. Underflow raceways commonly installed to provide both power. When they do it, they always they like to provide power and communication outlet at the same time, guys. So they have channels. When they put them down, Adam, you're looking at them. When you put them down, they put two locations, one for low voltage and one for the so dual duct, they call it, dual duct system. Uh, junction boxes constructed so that the power and the communication system are separated. When you put them, everything is separated in the junction box, guys. Um, uh, service fittings and outlets and what's not are available for different outlets. So it, it's a complete wiring method that comes with boxes and devices and what's not. Um, we'll look at them in a second. Here you go. Look at this. I don't know how many. I've never wired something like this, but you can come from the panel, guys, under 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 the concrete, completely in the concrete. You put your channels. Look at that dual duct. Come to a junction box, separation here, and you can go all, everywhere, guys, with all these uh, uh, under the concrete slab, under the slab, with the junction box and devices. Any comments? Any questions, guys? Any comments about this wiring method? Where would you use it? Huge open office open area and you need receptacles in in the middle of the floor that would be a good wiring method what's the problem with this wiring method adam you have to co co coordinate with the concrete uh, uh, people right when they when they pour that concrete you have to be there to set it up and what's not so they can pour the concrete right on top of it so there's a major coordination between you electrical contractor and the building contractor or the concrete Different type of boxes, guys, surface fittings that you can go from receptacles into outlets into high voltage, low voltage, and what's not. 
floor boxes. You can have metallic or non-metallic floor boxes that comes with it. Um, can be installed using approved wasteways also. If you uh, any approved wasteways, if you have if you have floor boxes. So the the two methods, like I said, guys, either an underfloor completely raceway system with its own fittings or floor boxes with with PVC conduit with PVC conduit. Um, okay, so th then pay a lot of attention when you guys deal with that because you have to do concrete pour, pour concrete in there. So there's a lot of coordination in the height and what's not. <clears throat> Uh, you can put your boxes and cut them and adjust them in the field. Um, if you don't know how high that receptacle is going to be, they allow you a little bit. You can see and you can adjust and cut these uh, these equipments in the field. Okay, here's um, a floor box with um, with leveling screws and what's not. This is the fittings that you can go. You can bring in this area, guys, here. Right here, you can bring a PVC conduit to attach to it. And then here's all the hardware that goes to build this receptacle in the concrete slab. Um, there's adjustment, there's different, you can cut and adjust to make it flush with the, with the floor and, and what's not. Uh, cover for protection so nothing can get into it. Obviously you can't flood it with water here because if you do, you know, if you are washing and what's not, you have to pay attention to putting water inside there because these are face up in the concrete slab. Any comments, any questions? So it's a complete wiring methods, guys. Great application for major buildings that you want to put. What's the problem with them? A lot of coordination with the concrete. When they pour concrete, you have to set your, your equipment. Okay. So um, the last thing is um, we have in this chapter talks about fire alarm system. We'll be talking about fire alarm system later on. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll walk you through, uh, and there's an article that talks about the fire alarm system and, and what's not. I'll talk talk about these one in a few seconds here. Let me see if we missed any. Okay, so we got these guys. We got these, get the wiring. Okay, so you can, um, for your conduits and what's not, guys, you can have, so for when you wire to the communication, look at that. They have a wire here inside the conduit that can pull a service conductor all the way up to the to the location of that cable TV or or telecommunication. So it allows you to pull your low voltage. We talked about these guys different type. Look how they, you can come directly with two duct system guys to get your high voltage, low voltage, special boxes, special fittings, special connector. So Adam, if you want a PVC, if you want to bring a PVC here, look what they have an adapter where you can bring a PVC conduit to the system. So it's really uh, support couplings and what's not. Uh, distribution system, standard insert duct, uh, junction boxes, um, marker screw assembly. So the whole complete system. Like we talked about these guys in terms of the boxes and the termination that you can do here. Okay. All right. So here's a box. Here's the box buddy, the inner ring, the adjustment ring, casket, the duplex grounded receptacle, could be GFCI, metal plate, and the casket here, and the brass cover, and the whole cover uh, cap at the top of it. So from top to bottom, you can adjust them here, guys. You can adjust these as you build them so it can be flush uh, with, the, with the floor. So anyway, this is how they build the system with boxes guys this is for pvc uh, a box in the ground with pvc coming to it look at uh and how you bring your pvc here you sit your boxes you cut it the right height and what's not so this is another way of bringing now remember you're going to be boring concrete over this so um, again another way of um, here's your boxes you can, look how you sit your box in at the end you measure it and what's not then you cut it the right height and you put your devices into it that's the second method of going underground any comments, guys, any questions? So if you're in a concrete, you have two options. You have either a box and a PVC conduit like this, or you have an underfloor uh, raceway system, underfloor raceway system that's kind of square boxes and channels and whatnot. Any comments, any questions? Any comments, guys, any questions? So I want to show you just one little thing before, uh, before that one. Let me just go into my NEC code book, if you guys don't mind me. Um, okay. 
you see. Uh, all right, so what was it? Let's go to the wiring method. I'm just going to show you. Come on. There you go. Wiring method. And I'm going to go to uh, metal wireless. Here's the metal wireless, guys. I'm just going to give you a quick tour of the, the article. Here's the article that talks about metal wireless. I want to bring to your attention, guys, how they define it. They say it's basically made out of... Uh, now, the metal wireways... Yeah, we didn't talk about the wireways. The wireways, raceways. The only difference between wireways... Anybody have seen the wireways? The wireways have a cover that with a hinge. It's exactly a raceway, surface-mounted raceway, except they have a cover with a hinged cover that you can open it and close it. Unlike the raceway with a cover, you slap the cover on it. That one is a hinge. So same calculation. If you're using wireways, we didn't talk about wireways. The code limits you guys to 20% fill on wireways, and you can start the rating if you exceed 30. So you can put 30 current current conductors in a wireway without the rating. So that's a, a major advantage why we use it. Okay, non-metallic wireways the same thing except they are non-metallic, and you have to rate every time you exceed three. So there's no advantage for it. Uh, multi-out assembly, here's your multi-out assembly, guys, uses permitted, um, shall be in a dry location, uses not permitted, you can't use them in other, in concealed areas, remember that concealed area, except if um, it shall be permissible to surround the back and the side of the metal raceways and what's not. Um, if you're using boxes and what's not, you have to do, you treat it like a junction box here, what it says. I'm going to go directly into non-metallic non extension. That's another wireway that they come with. Here you go. This Here's another interesting wireway. This one strut-type channels. They put them right on, underneath the uh, commercial um, commercial roof. Um, okay, here's your raceway, metallic raceway. So it's meant to protect your conductors, my friends. Uh, uses permitted in a dry location. You can use them if they're specified in hazardous location. Under raised floor, if permitted and what's not. Not permitted if such subject to severe physical damage, um, where the voltages are these uh, these are the metallic ones. They have a limitation on the voltage, 300 volt. Um, size of the conductors. Can you guys see the size of the conductor uh, driven by the manufacturer? Number of conductors also driven by the manufacturer. But um, if you don't want to derate, they allow you up to 30 current current conductors at them inside it if you meet this criteria which is basically you have to have a square uh, four inch square inch um, and you don't fill more than 20 percent of it um, then you can uh, have 30 hot conductors or current current conductors without rating. you have to secure it and support it based on the manufacturer's recommendation you can splice inside it shall be permitted you splice inside it don't fill 75 percent of it it can be used as a grounding uh, method guys you can use it as a grounding because it's metallic Okay, so that's basically the article, Adam, that talks about this. See how small it is? Two pages in the NEC code book. Right next to it, gentlemen, is, um, is the non-metallic, same way, except it's non-metallic, um, and um, uses permitted in a dry location and what's not, uh, uses not permitted, again, physical, uh, severe physical damage is not allowed in, in hazardous location unless it's specified. Size of conductor and how many conductors are driven by the manufacturer as well as the support and the splice bring it on splice it can you use it as a grounding no because it's not metallic so you have to pull and equipment is required for it so that's that's what i want to show you guys in terms of this uh, this article any comments any questions any comments any questions about these wiring so these are your wiring methods um basically one more tool that you can use guys as a designer so if you want to solve a problem well i heard about the underfloor wiring methods the underfloor what was it the underfloor was um here's underfloor raceway look at that one that that we just talked about that's mint underfloor number of conductors guys size again by the um the conductor which the raceway is designed for manufacturer number of conductors in a race where you can't fill more than 40 percent of it Splice only in a junction box. Can you guys see that for all this uh, baby? Um, uh, uh, for uh, uh, underfloor raceway? Uh, no, more just, uh, like um, 
uh, you can only fill 20% of it. Yeah. And what if they, what if they want to know the actual square? Okay, you take the, if they have to give you dimension, right? Yeah. The X and the Y multiplying by each other, that would be the square inch of it. And then you can take what you kind of have on. Depending on what the question is, what, how much you can fill out of that? Yeah, that's a good thing. Uh, fill 40% 40, 40 for a traditional raceway. Oh. That's yeah, piece. Half, you got. The, you got it. Yeah, absolutely. They're giving you the fill, though. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The finishing underflow risk we use is permitted. Underflow risk which shall be permitted beneath the surface of concrete or other flooring material. Um, so these are the covering and what's not, guys. So a few things about the uh, your uh, underflow risk with underflow risk with any comments, my friend. Any questions? Ambicity of the conductor, you have to go to three. The ambicity adjustment factor shall apply to conductors inside the underfloor raceway. So you have to apply the ambicity adjustment. If you have three or more, Adam, you have to do, do it for these babies. Okay, last thing I want to do, guys, with that one is I show you, because they talk about the fire alarm, we will be talking about the fire alarm next week. Next week. Um, they talk about the fire alarm in this system. Fire alarm system, guys, and I don't want to open it too much here because we will be talking about not next week, the week after. Fire alarm is always, you have a fire alarm control panel. Here's your control panel. These are the brain. You power this one with a 20 amp circuit dedicated and you have a battery in it. That's it. Powered with a 20 amp dedicated circuit and have a battery in it. Then, my friend, you have, of course, the um, photo detector, an ionization detector. These are your smoke detectors, heat detectors, uh, dual monitor module that can get you certain things, uh, photo and thermal. All these are your input devices, guys, duct detectors, uh, pull station. All these will be interfaced with the fire alarm system as your input devices. Um, same, the output devices will be power supply here. You can drive uh, the strobes, horn strobes, so if there is a fire, it sends the smoke, send the signal to the fire alarm. The fire alarm will, will decide that there is smoke, it send a signal to the strobes and the horns, the horns and strobes to go off. Um, with a couple of other guys interference with other equipment. So that's what I want to mention. So please look at this one, Adam. We're not doing it next week. The week after, this becomes very handy when we start laying out our fire alarm system for the building. So, and we do have a fire alarm speaker and what's not coming, not next week, the week after, though. Any comments, any questions? Any comments, guys, any questions about this, this chapter? So please be aware, all these ideas, guys, that we give it to you, is when you become a designer, so you, you're aware that there are different wiring methods that you can utilize to provide uh, the optimum designed system for your customers. So they can pay you and keep you in business, Matt, right? Is that a good idea or not? Otherwise, I mean, I can use barbed wire to wire a house. <laughs> okay, cool. That's all I have, guys. We, uh, like you know, we have our speaker coming in a few here. So I, I want to remind you, please, that you are to drop all your fixtures and circuit them and switch them and tag them. And by the end of the day, please print from Revit 22 by 34 before you leave. Um, Adam, my friend, the same thing. Uh, so that's kind of the expectation for the day. Um, so, but please, when the speaker comes, please, you guys, are, I don't know how many of you are familiar with low voltage. I talked a little bit about low voltage control system, 24 volt. He has a panel. It's really cool to look at what, what they're doing. So thank you.